Welcome, everybody, to the iBug Buzz, episode 605 for October 16th, 2023. If we have anyone that's new to the iBug Buzz that's joining us on this call, or if you're listening to a recording of this call, we want to extend a special welcome and encourage you to make us part of your regular schedule. Join us on Monday nights. Uh, iBug Buzz is an open forum where we encourage people to bring their questions, uh, issues that they've encountered using their iOS devices, and specifically questions and issues related to using voiceover or other accessibility features on those devices. And those devices would be the iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, Apple Watch, the iPod Touch, and any of the peripherals that we use with those, like keyboards, braille displays, uh, headphones, etc. Uh, we like to start each meeting uh, with announcements and preview of what's coming up this week in iBug activities. So for that, I'll turn it over to Sandia. All right. Hello, Greg. Good evening. All right, let's get started. We have a very busy week once again. So something every day. All things are on Zoom unless specified. Otherwise, everything is central time. Okay, for the next two hours, we're going to do our bug buzz. We'll have the big reveal at the midpoint. So definitely stick around for that and participate. Tuesday, we have the Mac buzz on Clubhouse from 5 to 6. Wednesday, Android Insight from 7 to 8.30 on Zoom. Thursday is Trekkie Talk from 8 to 9.30. Then Friday night is I Night at the Virtual Movies. We don't know what we're going to be watching, but it'll be at 8 o'clock. 7.15 for the social time discussion and trivia to follow. All right. Uh, social media. Just visit our website, ibugtoday.org. I-B-U-G-T-O-D-A-Y dot O-R-G. The best place to get all the information. We have about 21 events every month. So aren't you glad I'm not going to tell you all of them right now? We have a rather long book for our Vila Book Club. So I thought I'd let you know because it's about 13 hours and 25 minutes. So it's called The Devil in the White City Madness. Oh, what is it called? Murder, Magic, and Madness. So that kind of sums up. Uh, well, no. <laughs> okay, DB55748. That's the, uh, the DB number. Okay, with that, I will hand it back to Greg. All right. Thank you, Sandia. A lot of things going on. Uh, uh, so we'd like to, uh, at this point, uh, go around the room, give everybody a chance to say hello. Uh, I'll, to do that, you'll need to unmute, state your name, tell us where you're from. And if you're new to the iBug Buzz, please share that with us. Uh, I'll get things started. I'm Greg in Texas. Yes. Hi, uh, Julie. Herbie in Houston. Hey, Herbie. Chanel in Houston. Hi, Chanel. Pete, John. Florida. Hey, Pete. Hey, Greg. John in Austin. Uh, who is it in Boston? John? John. John in Austin. Hey, John. Oh, John in Austin. Thank All right. Hey, John. Greg. Yeah. Terry at Arlington Heights. Hi, Terry. Hey, Terry. Marie in Reno. Hi, Marie. Helene in Woodstock, New York. Okay, I got Helene. Welcome. Who else was it? Liz. Hey, Liz. Welcome. Ed from Georgetown, Ontario. Hi, Ed. Hi. And Vanessa from Georgia. Hi, Vanessa. Welcome. Hey. Thank you. Sarah from Vermont. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Jody from New Hampshire. Hey, Jody. Roy from Texas. Jody. Hi, Roy. Good job on the the um, workshop. Mm -hmm. who, who else have we got? Desi Gloria from Franklin, Tennessee. Oop, I got Gloria and who from Tennessee? Desi. Hi, Desi. Hi. Any, 
Anybody else? Rosetta from Georgia. Hi, Rosetta. Elizabeth from Newfoundland, Canada. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome. Thank you. Sandia in Houston. Hey, Sandia. Suva from Houston. Hi, Suva. Who else have we got? Anybody else? Okay. I didn't hear any new names uh, in case I've missed. Is there anybody that's new that's joining us tonight? Okay. Let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, anybody that has a question or an issue, who wants to start us off? This is Helene. Go ahead, Helene. I have, um, I do a Zoom yoga class uh, with just two people and when I get on to the zoom um, the person says you know can you turn your phone to be you know landscape and as soon as I do that I lose um, she can't hear me and she can't see me and then I have to get off the call and then check in again and go but as soon as I turn the phone is there something that has to be done that I can't zoom sideways if I came in, you know, in, in a portrait. Okay, good. Anybody have any uh, thoughts on that? Anybody else experience that? This is Sarah. Sarah, go ahead. I, I don't have a solution, but are you on 17? Did you update to 17? Uh, no, no, I'm on 16.7.3. The last. Okay, then. Yeah. That, I was thinking that it was that thing that happens that you, when you put your phone sideways and um, that it turns into like a clock or, uh, you know, whatever you've set it up in 17. Right. Uh... But no. Uh, any, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Um, Helene, are you doing this after you log into Zoom, or you do you have your phone oh. in the landscape mode while before you log in? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, this, I what I do is I go to my name, and then I have a link in there to click on that someone gave me that I can just press that number. And then that goes into the Zoom. So I don't go into Zoom at all. I go into my messages, find my name, Helene, and then click on this number. Um, just I, I'm just I'm just throwing this out in the left field and see if it'll land. But maybe tr try it with the landscape mode logging into through your message through the Zoom app just to see mm. if that makes any difference. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll try. I'll see if I can get all my apps to show up when I, I never turn my phone that way, but I guess it should work. So that, it's a try. Thank this you. This is Chanel. Chanel, go ahead. Yeah, you don't have, so um, on our phones, there's a way to lock it in the particular orientation that you want. So you, do you have your phone locked in portrait by chance to where it can't turn to landscape? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if that's yeah. even a factor. Right. You, thought. right. Yeah. Helene, you might want to check that. That's in the control center and it would be a lock or it voiceover would announce it as a lock orientation. Um, yeah. You Thank might you. try that. Let's yeah. Let's go ahead and Thank uh, you. yeah. Uh, let's get another question. Who has another question? Anybody else? I know we've got some questions out there. All right. The uh, seeing AI, has anybody, they just did an update on that that brought some of the uh, uh, chat GPT function into that. Has anybody had a chance to play with that? Mm 
Hi, it's Vanessa. Um, actually, I tried it. Um, took a couple of pictures, and it actually described everything pretty well. I I like it. Anybody else had a chance? This is Sri. Yeah, Sri, go ahead. So I actually took a picture of it before I came to this meeting. You know, we were grabbing something to eat. So I actually had the camera in the windshield and took a picture outside. And this was with the uh, image description. And what it basically told me was there's five objects that are found in the picture. And then it told me to slide my finger around. And once my finger found the object, it read the object to me and it described it pretty pretty well in detail. For example, it found the eel sign. It told me about the fine that the eel sign is going to cost you if you cross uh, if you cross the eel sign, you know, when you're not supposed to. It found that there was it recognized the vent on my car. It told me that the radio station that I was listening to and the time that was on the on the clock on the radio in the car. It told me that it saw a red light in front, which was the vehicle in front. Um, but it was basically, I had to do a touch and explore on the image. And as I touched the object, and it was giving me some sound alerts, like telling me, okay, I'm in, I'm in dead area. When it found an object, it gave me a different sound alert. And that was my experience with uh, the image description of it. Interesting. I I just used it to take a picture in in the house, and uh, it it uh, was pretty impressive uh, description. Yeah, similar to the uh, "Be My Eyes" or uh, "Be My AI" or the other Chat GPT apps. This anybody? Is true. Yes, Ray, go ahead. So, so, Greg, did it tell you that that found a certain amount of objects? I just want to see what mine was. If mine behaved different than yours. Uh, no, it it. It just described some of the furniture in the room, and then I asked it to give me more information, and it it gave me a whole. But there was no touch, and you know, telling me number of items or touching and telling me about dead space or anything. Hmm. And this is Shrey. Yeah. Go what ahead. I, so, did you do the which channel did you select? Uh, I think it was seen. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. This yeah. is Ed. This Ed, is go Silver. ahead. Oh, Ed and then Silva. Yeah, um, I've used uh, Be My Eyes. Be My Eyes, only the AI part of it. I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about, but um, I've taken a number of pictures of of people in my living room, and it, it fully describes uh, uh, everything about the room, uh, Every a lot of little details. Uh, I don't touch anything. It just It just reads it. Um, I've done it uh, in another home, uh, and it did the same thing. It uh, described everything right down to um, identified iPhones or, or, or uh, yeah, identified iPhones. Picked up little pictures, read the little the little letters on your television, telling you what kind of TV it is. Um, told you what's on the screen. Uh, the color of the walls, like right, it's pretty color. impressive. Yeah, it does everything. Yeah. And well, now, in fact, yeah. <clears throat> uh, the the uh, the one thing I wanted to ask is that I went on um, an info thing with uh, uh, another group, and um, the woman that was doing it, she described uh, pictures that she had had taken, but she also chose to describe it in um Shakespearean English and it and it I don't know where or how she got it to do that whether that's some other uh thing you can add to it but it it totally described it in uh Shakespearean English and did a fantastic job um but I was just wondering if anybody else has seen that in in a menu or is there a menu there this is Sonia yeah, Sandia, go ahead. Well, just to clarify, so you were asking about seeing AI, and Ed is talking be, about yeah, be, be my, my AI. AI. Right. But they're right. very oh. similar, but just making a clarification. Okay? Yeah. The, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, the seeing, you know, I thought I heard that, but I didn't realize seeing AI was doing the same thing as what Be My Eyes is doing. Right. They just started doing that. I think it was an update on Friday that they, they okay. just added those features. So, uh, yeah. So, Suba, go ahead. 
Uh, so thank you for um you know clarifying. So um yeah, I was playing around with it a little bit. I was giving a color, testing out some colors of uh, different shirts. And um yeah, it was it was pretty cool to to see that uh or to hear that yeah, the it's getting majority of them correctly. Um so that's pretty cool. It's got a couple of them wrong, but that's to be expected. I think the lighting, if I get the lighting correctly, I think it, it will get them right. So that's pretty cool. That's that's a hard part with colors is yeah. getting the, the lighting uh, where mm -hmm. it gives you an accurate uh, accurate color. This is Shree. Yeah, Shree, go ahead. So I, I just looked at my the screenshot that I took of um, seeing it at my car. So what it looks like to me, is there's when I first took a picture, it gives me just a general description. And then there was an option for me to select the photo. And when I selected the photo is when it was giving me this five different objects and it asked me to touch around the screen to identify the object. And then when I touched the object, it started reading it to me. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it just it just amazes me. I mean, we were uh, very fortunate to have that kind of technology available to us uh, at this point. Hopefully, hopefully we don't... Uh, uh, doesn't go all subscription on us. But let's let's go ahead and move on to another question, another topic. Who has another question? This is Ray from Maine. Yeah, Ray, go ahead. All right. I use a, uh, it's like a GPS program called Soundscape when I go for a walk with my guide dog. Okay. Uh, so when I'm walking, within about 10 to 15 seconds, I, the focus goes someplace else. So I have to refocus it to the app in question and refocus it. And then I, I walk a little further, probably 15, 30 seconds. And again, uh, it seems to lose focus. The same thing seems to happen with when I'm... Uh, listening to uh i'm taking the mac training course so when i listen to a recording uh within about 15 to 20 seconds the focus seems to shift someplace else uh same things happen with another app uh I say like i'm listening to my favorite radio station the focus lasts for about 15 20 seconds and then it goes someplace else so i have to refocus is it, it you know? let me yeah let me yeah try to get a clarification on that when you say it loses this focus is, where where does it where is it going what are you hearing it may it may go like to the home page or uh may go to facetime or something it just goes someplace else okay to another app or to the home screen okay who yeah yeah who okay who who can help with that any thoughts Do you have the phone in your pocket or? Uh, it's it's on a holster, which is, uh, it's clipped onto my belt. Okay. Pete. Pete, go ahead. Uh, Ray, I'm wondering if you might have your auto lock on like 30 seconds, whatever the lowest setting is, and it's and your phone is locking. Would that be possible? I don't know. How do yeah. I get, how do I find that? Uh, that would be in in your settings app. Just open settings and go to uh -huh. screen. Is it screen and brightness? The display. I'm sorry. I think it's display. Screen. Okay. Yes. Yeah, settings. Screen display, settings and display. Settings okay. and display, and then right. you'll find uh, auto lock. Okay. And there's a series of uh, thresholds, time thresholds, starting with a very short one, like 30 seconds. And mm -hmm. moving up to five minutes, and that's the time uh, that it, that your screen will lock and essentially, you know, turn your phone off and certainly pull your focus away from whatever app you're using. I would think uh, so if, you I can, I can. if you don't uh, touch the screen. So by 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 selecting five minutes, the focus will stay on the particular app I want it to be focused on for at least five minutes. I'm not 100% sure that that's your problem, but that will uh -huh. keep your phone from locking for five minutes. And there's also a setting called never, which might not be a bad idea while you're uh, using this, because then, you know, even if after five minutes, it won't lock on you. 
you have yeah, to remember like it. when you get yeah, home. I'd like that, it to be never be great. Yeah. Yeah. This there's is... a never on there. And then, then you'll have to remember to turn your phone off, lock it manually, or your battery will go, you know, quickly. Right. Have any but other see thoughts? If that's not it. I don't this know. This is what Sandia. Else. Sandia, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't quite sound like this because of that, you know, that sensitivity issue that we have all, we've talked about a couple of times on here. But the fact that he's in an app and then it switches later, that doesn't make, you know, it doesn't, it's not consistent with that other issue. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Right. I'm wondering if it's a holster issue. I know I have a holster and sometimes uh, uh, the holster will touch the touch the screen and it it will change change the focus you might you might try with the soundscape if you can uh, hold the phone while you're walking and and just see if 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 it doesn't change focus uh then that's probably your problem is the the holsters touching that phone screen uh while you're walking uh-huh okay any any other thoughts on that does it add? Ed, go ahead. Could he not lock, uh, like, just freeze the screen or lock the screen so it wouldn't be sensitive? You know what I mean? Like just right, just so, lock the, just hit the side button and and yeah, with that yeah, lock phone. Effect, yeah, would that affect his performance is, on a, yeah, yeah. yeah, or or maybe maybe if he's got a lot of apps open, he could try closing the apps. I don't know. Yeah, Ray, do you know if your phone is locked while you're, well, let's take the example of Soundscape. Do you know if your phone is locked when you're, after you start your walk? You know, I really don't know. I don't know how to lock my phone or unlock it. I've never, I've never dealt with that. Just, just tap the side button and that'll lock it. Just tap the, the right, the right hand side button? Correct. The power button? Yeah. This is that'll, just once? T- yeah. Okay. Yeah, just once. Terry, go ahead. Um, the problem is though some for some apps like that, if you uh, I, and I don't remember honestly if this is one of them, if you lock the phone, that affects uh, what the app will do for you. Um, or it, it so you'd have to kind of experiment with it before you actually need to use it to see if locking your phone will help that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's you a good point. Experiment we with it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to another another question. This is Desi. Desi, go ahead. So um Ray brings up something that I have been wondering about um because I have um several different GPS programs on my phone. Uh, and when people are out and about using your GPS apps, um, how do you know if you can lock your screen while you're using it and it will still give you the information? Is it just completely a trial and error kind of thing? Because my problem is I don't have a holster but a lot of times I will have my phone in my pocket and I have a pair of Bose frames that I will use for hearing what the output is of the app. But I'm always afraid to put my phone in my pocket because if the screen is unlocked, I'm afraid I'm going to change, you know, like, like Ray said, I'm going to, you know, unfocus it or, or open up some other app that I didn't mean to app, uh, open or whatever. So I'm just curious what, what people do if you're using these apps when you're going out and about. Okay. This Who's... is Terry. Terry, go ahead. Um, again, this is one of those examples where you really need to practice it when you don't need it. Because um, sometimes with some of these apps, uh, if you put your phone in your pocket, there are uh, like soundscape uh, and it's the newer, there's a newer version too, that's called by a different name, by the way, but soundscape itself still works. It's my understanding, but it won't work except with, I think, specific headphones if you have it in your pocket. So some of these GPS apps, you, you have to kind of play with them first to know what 
parameters you know you need to use in order to to make them work um so sometimes if if i can and i'm going to put it in my pocket i try and lock the screen if i know that it's going to work if i know that locking it will affect whatever it is i'm doing then i try to affix it to my body in some way with a holster or a lanyard or something with the screen facing out so that I am less likely to uh, interfere with what is on the screen because I need to leave it unlocked. Okay. This this is Desi. Yeah. Desi. Okay. That's, that's kind of what I thought, but I know people do this all the time. And I was thinking, well, you know, nobody ever talks about if they, if they lock their screen or if they don't lock it or if they have their phone in a holster or it's in their pocket or on a lanyard or, you know. Um, so yeah, that was where my right. curiosity was. Yeah. I've, when I've, when I've used soundscape or when I use GPS apps, uh, when I'm passenger in a car, then I, I have my phone, the display auto lock set to never. So that's the way, and it's never an issue, but the downside of that is there is a security risk when you're out in public and have your phone set to, you know, never, never lock, but look, right. who, who's, who has used soundscape or GPS apps with the, with Jody. the phone locked? Jody, go ahead. Uh, I, well, the first thing is you want to make sure you've gotten rid of the old soundscape that expired in August. And there are three apps available. There's Soundscape Community, Soundscape, and Voice Vista. And uh, I'm using Soundscape Community, and I keep my phone in a case, uh, a wallet case, in my pocket using a Bluetooth earbud when I'm using uh, Soundscape Community. And I've had no problems at all. It just keeps running just fine. And um, I think it keeps the screen. I think it keeps the screen unlocked while you're using it. Okay. So, and I've had no problems at all, but um, that's in a case using Bluetooth with a phone in my pocket. Okay. So if you're if you're using the app, then it will will keep the phone unlocked. I'm not sure if it's keeping it unlocked, but it's definitely running. Whether it's yeah. running with a lock screen or not, I'm not sure, but it it does run and uh, uh, very well. But make sure you get rid of the old soundscape uh, before you you know get the new ones. And there's those three are Soundscape, Soundscape Community, and Voice Vista. Is anybody using a GPS app or Soundscape with a screen locked? This is Dot. Dot, go ahead. Yeah, I, I have experience uh, tried uh, using Apple Map with a lock screen and it works fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then I I'm, always I'm, have it locked. Yeah. Okay. I'm guessing Soundscape or others would do the same. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's let's keep going. Uh, Dot. Yeah, Dot, go ahead. I have a question. Sure. I I updated my phone to iOS 17. I have used BART a lot lately, and I have I, I run into a problem with with the speed to tone function. Okay. It doesn't work. So I just I just keep it on speed. So I don't know. Uh, anybody experience with that or have run into that problem? It just okay. stay on speed. It doesn't matter okay. how double tab or long prop, long pause or whatever, whatever I do, it just stay on speed. Okay. No Pete. Who, yeah, Pete, go ahead. I think Dot, uh, hey, by the way, haven't heard from you in a while. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been traveling. I think yeah. if you go into your, is it the setting, is there a settings tab still at the bottom? There's an yeah. audio settings in there and it's oh. a, a setting in there. I tried it again. Yes, I tried it as well yesterday. And the tone versus, you know, it used to be a top tone and speed. And oh, it doesn't okay. work on the face of on the face of the now playing screen. It doesn't work anymore. But if you can go into audio settings, you'll find it there, and you you set it one way or another in there. Um, oh, geez. And then of course you oh, have okay. to go back and set reset it if you wanted to change it. A little okay. more inconvenient, but it works in inside yeah. the audio settings. Okay. Ah, good. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Todd. Okay. Sure. Okay. Who who has another question? This is Shri. Shri, go ahead. So I, I have a follow up with the Bard question. So I was working with my mentee today, and we were looking at the Bard app, and she's running the latest OS, 
but every time she goes to one of the tabs and launches it, she gets a, to me, it sounds like an error message and I hit okay, uh, but everything else seems to work. So I'm wondering if anyone's seen, have experienced that. Okay. Anybody? Anybody had that experience on Bard? Uh, this is Dr. Excuse me. Uh, what was the question again? I um, I missed some part of it. My okay, on the, on the Bard app, when you when you tap on one of the tabs at the bottom of the screen, uh, you're getting an error message. Oh yeah. This is Liz. Liz, go ahead. I think they did another update that they didn't let us know about for this one because mine did that when I was trying to download a book that was in my um wish list, but I tr I power cycled my phone and then it started working again. Okay. Yeah, I've I've had the experience where Bard has frozen a few times. I've been listening to a book and I'll come back later and and it'll it'll be frozen. I have to go to the app switcher and close Bard and reopen it and then it works fine. Uh, but I have not gotten that error, any kind of error message. Anybody else getting an error message on Bard? This is Suva. Suva, go ahead. No, I am uh, just, you know, make I, I use Bard too and been demoing it a lot, um, but use it on iPad and uh, in the still in iOS 16, iOS 17. Uh, no no problem with the tabs, no error messages. I remember to um, navigate through all settings, no problem. Okay. All right, good. Okay, Sri, so you're on your... Sarah, go ahead. Oh. Um, I've, I've had definite problems with Bard, um, and I'm on 17. Um, it, it, it'll it stop. The sound will stop, um, and I can't get it to read until I just get out of the app, close it, and then go back to it. Um, so I think it's that's a definite bug. Yeah, I think I think they're just uh, slow to catch up with some of these updates, iOS updates. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, another another question, another this issue. This is Marcia. Marcia, hey, go ahead. You you taught me uh, that when a call when a text came in with a phone number and it didn't have you know it wasn't in my contacts. You told me a way to do that. And I've had that happen several times. I've got so many notes and so many recordings. I can't go back to find out. Um, I've tried to, as you, I think you said, to center in on the number. And then you said to flick up or down. And I tried it there. And I also tried opening and going flicking up and down. And I couldn't figure out how to do it. Okay. Now, what are you trying to add that number oh. to your contact list or... Right, and and I and I know that then I don't have to remember it to try to put it in contacts. You know, it copies it, and then um, I can put it open a new contact, put the name in there, and then put the you know, okay, put the number in there. Okay, so who can help Marsha with that? This is Pete. Pete, go ahead. I believe, Marcia, that if you do open the message, uh, brings you to a new screen. At the top of the screen is the phone. You'll find a back button on the top left. And then to the right of that is the bu a button again that says this, the phone number once again. And I believe if you tap on that, you'll get another screen at the bottom of the screen or about three quarters of the way down. You'll see a couple of options. One is create new contact and if you double tap on that then you will op be opened to your contacts screen and uh, you can type in the name first and last name uh, all the other contact information that you would typically add when uh, creating a new contact you know the relationship the company they work for their email address if you have it but I think you need to open the email first and go to that screen and then yes, towards the bottom of it. Uh, now, without doing it, I may be missing a step or two. This is Dot. Dot, go ahead. Yeah, Pete, you're missing one step. 
It's yeah. called more more info. So after you open, you double tap on the phone number. You have to go to all the well. First, you will see call message, and then mail, and then more info. Then right. that's when you get to create new contact or share contact or add to existing contact stuff like that. All right, good. Yeah. Right on, Dot. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks to both of you. Yes, Marcia, you're you're good to go there. Chris, Thank go you. ahead. Uh, Marcia, did you say there was a uh, somebody called you or was it a text message? I'm sorry. I'm no, it's a text message. I've, and it's oh, one man. of them was a doctor and one of them was, you know, different different things that I wanted to save the number. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, good. Thank you guys. This is Jody. Jody, go ahead. Another way that you can do it is once you're focused on the phone number, you can do that three finger quadruple tap that will copy that phone number to your clipboard. And then you can go into your contacts and add, uh, add it there by, you know, if it's a new contact, you can start a new contact. And then when you uh, have the phone number, go to the phone number field and then go to your edit, you go to your rotor and go to edit and then paste. And then you can paste the phone number directly there. Great. Right. I forget. I forget. You know, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. So your three finger right. quadruple tap and then your edit, your rotor, edit and paste. All right. So a couple of ways to do that. All right. Let's go on to another question. I do have another one. Okay. It's Marcia. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Marcia. I did. Uh, Jason downloaded 17 and it has so many bugs and I'm thinking that when 18 comes out, I don't want to do 18. I want to wait till it gets to update number four, you know, so they've got the bugs out. It, 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 when you do that, it bypasses everything else and does, and, and if you do the number four, it bypasses everything else and puts the new one in there, right? Uh, there will be a 17... Point one will come I've out had, between I've now and that. the end of the no. I think we're on seventeen point oh point two or three now. Seventeen point one should should uh, fix some of the bugs, and that that would is supposed to be coming out by the end of the month. Uh, and a lot of people will hold off uh, updating their software until at least seventeen. You know the point one version has come out but uh that's kind of a personal choice if yeah yeah okay i think that's what i want to do yeah well watch for that 17.1 and and uh update to that and see if that fixes some of the issues all right let's move on another question this is vincent vincent go ahead yeah I, it's a couple of items one of them has to do with the uh uh, uh phone the other one with contacts uh, with the phone, uh, before when I got a, a phone call and I didn't uh, uh, answer it, I would go to recents and I would focus on the uh, on number. I would double tap it and uh, it would uh, you know call the phone. Now, when I double tap it, it gives me two options. One is report and the other one is delete. And if I want to call that number, I have to... Uh, you know, go, like, you know, go to my co contacts or if there's a message or somewhere, there is no way that, that I can call that number. So I wonder if anybody, you know, what I am doing wrong that I cannot call that number. If I'm Okay. This is Brad. Brad, go ahead. I've experienced that same thing. If you swipe down, you will come to what it says, get info. And then you can double tap on that and it will open it up. And basically, it's a it's a page that let's say it's not in your contacts, okay, or or even if it is in your contacts, it will show you like when that phone call happened, how long it happened. Maybe if it says, you know, you had two calls, three calls to that number, they're all right there in that same item in your um, recents. But if you swipe on past that, you'll eventually get to where the contact information. And if it's somebody who's in your contacts, if it, if it's not in your contacts, there's going to be the phone number and you can double tap on it and call it. If it is in your contacts 
And maybe you even have more than one number, a home number, a cell number, a work number. All three will show up and you could pick any one of them that you could then double tap and call the number. It is a problem. I don't understand really the purpose of that. Um, what does it say? Would you say report or delete? I I, right. I don't know if it's, to, to me, it's almost like it's thinking that it's spam. I mean, I got, a, I get a lot of these calls and my, my T-Mobile will say um, spam likely, but I have it happen when it's somebody who's in my contacts. So I don't really understand the purpose of that. And, it's a problem, uh, but I've been able to get around it by f swipe by flicking up or down to get info, or maybe it says more info, something like that. Okay, that's, I want to try that. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds like something you might want to uh, bring to um, Apple Accessibility's attention or Apple's attention because that's that's really inconvenient. This is Sri. Yeah, Sri, go ahead. Brad, is it does it occur every call or just random? No, it just seems to occur random. Like either I have yet to been able to figure out what causes it. I had someone call me tonight. Um, I had a cell phone from somebody and I've been trying to call him, couldn't reach him, so I've sent him an email. Turns out, of course, he doesn't use his cell phone much, so he kept it, keeps it off. He called me from his home number. So now I got the home number. I went to my recent calls. I flicked to more info and was able then with no problem then to go where I can add that to an existing contact. That's what I was trying to do. But the point is um, I did not try tapping it to call. You're right. That's what we're trying to do. So, um, but I've, I've had others in there that I've called today that were in my recents and it doesn't pop up. So I have no idea what makes it pop up. I, Again, is this a feature or is it a bug? If it's a feature, it's an irritating feature. Right. If it's a bug, well, all bugs are kind of irritating. Yeah. So I, wonder, I don't know. Uh, yeah, guys, what do you if if you were to triple tap on that phone number, do you think it would pull up a menu that would have call in it? It would probably pull up a menu that's got the same things you get when you yeah. flick up okay. and down. That's what okay. I'm thinking. Yeah, because that's, that's what a lot right. of those menus have in them. Right. This is Chris. Chris, go ahead. If you triple tap, you will get a, a context menu. And one of those things in there is like create new contact or share contact. All right. There's not a call. There, there's not a call option. I think there is actually. I don't remember, but I I think so. I don't either. You might you might try that. I, I think Brad's probably right on that. It's going to be the same thing as if you're flicking up and down. But yeah, try that. Try a triple tap on the number and see if see what you get on that. That's always worth trying. Well, this is Brad. Brad, go ahead. Um, the uh, add to contacts is not in the rotation when you flick, but once you go to more info or whatever it says and open it up, yes, that's where you do find, you know, add to existing, create new content, all that kind of stuff. So it makes sense that if you one finger triple or double tap and hold, it's going to open that contact context menu and that stuff would be in it because those are common actions that you're going to want to do. Right. I need to try to do that more often. I forget yeah. about that. Well, that seems like a real inconvenient uh, feature they've built in. Let's go yeah, ahead. And, it is. I don't yeah, like let, it. Let's go ahead and move on. Uh, who's Who's got another question? Bridget. Hey, Bridget. What you got? Hi. Um, can some sweet person refresh my mind on how to save my content? Not from to save a contact call someone send me. Okay. Somebody sent you a contact card and you want to save that to your contacts list. Who can help with that? Yeah, the, go ahead. Go ahead, Bridget. Was there something else? No, I'm saying it's been about six months. Well, that will send me a contact card for iBook. So she explained to me how to save it but then someone else sent me one and i totally forgot right that happens okay who can who can help pat pat go ahead okay you double tap on the contact card in your message or whatever to activate it it'll bring up the contacts swipe down 
tell you here, create new contact, double tap, and then hit done in the upper right hand corner. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. You're welcome. Good. Good question. Good answer. This is Pete. Pete, go ahead. I just wanted to clarify, Pat, when you say swipe down, do you mean flick to the right to move to go down the screen? Pat? Yes. I yeah, I I should have said swipe right. I'm sorry. That's okay, because we're we're talking I just about said five. swipe down. I'm I You meant flick to the right and it goes on. Yes, down. yes. Because we're yes. talking Sometimes hear about actions menu, which is an up and down swipe. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, that. yeah. Thank you for. Yeah, pleasure, no problem man. at all. Thank you. All right, all right. Another question. Another issue. This is Marcia. I got one more. Um, okay. When Go I ahead. get a voicemail, it doesn't tell me, and then all of a sudden, I'll I'll have eight of them, and one of them might be important. Is there some place? To go in settings to to have it tell me when I have a voicemail. Okay, so you want to be notified of your voicemails. Right. Who can who can help with that? Resume recording. This is Brad. Brad, go ahead. You may be able to open uh, on your home screen somewhere. You have the icon for the phone app, and I believe by default. Your notifications are set to show what's called an icon app or an app icon app a badge. It's a little to a sighted person. It's a little number in the upper right hand corner, and it says that there's something there, and it could be a missed call, it could be uh, a message. But if you then open the phone app and go along the uh, tab, the buttons along the bottom of the screen. If it's a missed call, your recent will say something like one item. If you go to messages and you have one or more messages, it might say eight items telling you there's, you know, eight messages. So you might have your little badge app icon says 16. Well, you go in there and find out you have eight missed calls and every one of them left you a voice message. So the voicemail button is going to say, eight also. So that's a grand total of 16. Now you should have a tone when you I'm get, saying. when you get a voice message. And that's what I want. Uh -huh. If you go to sounds and haptics, open that up and go through there. Um, one of them, there's, you'll sign ringtone there'll be alert tone like when you get a text message then you'll also find it'll say tone for calendar alert there should be one for voice message that's what i wanted i didn't know you how to should get have there. it now now keep in mind if you have that switch on the side of your phone set to mute you're not going to hear them or yeah, if you have do not disturb turned on you're not going to hear them yeah i don't do that right so you might want to check check that and you there's also a setting in there to adjust your volume like the what what you hear the sounds that they and um you want to make sure that's turned up mm -hmm. um there's also a setting in there to make it so it doesn't affect the volume doesn't affect the uh ringers and alert tones and you want to there's a toggle there turn that off so that way you know then when the some when when you have those set on a certain volume. When you adjust the volume that you hear through the speaker, it won't change. At least in theory, it doesn't. Sometimes it does. What's, what's the name of that toggle? It says, uh, oh God, help me out. I know, but I've been messing with it for years. It says, it's a toggle that says, you set it so the volume of will not affect the level of the volume of ringtones and alerts. This is Sonia. Tell me what it um, says. Yeah, change so, with ringtones. Change, change with, with ringtone. Volume with ringtone. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I've only been reading saying, it for 12 years and I can't tell you what it Everybody's saying says. that. It, both of you said it at the same time and I couldn't hear either the one. The volume will not have changed. Change with ringtones and alert. You, you turn it to off so that the volume of ringtones and alerts will not change with the volume of other sounds. Good. All right, guys. We need yeah. to get. move on. 
Yes. Okay. Another question. Oh, it's recording. This is Shri. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, another question about voicemail. So this transcribe, when you know somebody's leaving me a voicemail message, it's transcribing and voiceovers reading it. Is there a way to turn that off? This is Herbie. Herbie, go ahead. Yes, um, you can actually do it. Well, now with the latest beta, you'll be able to turn it off from within the voicemail itself. But if you go under phone in settings, there's an option for the voicemail transcript. Um, this is Shri. Sorry, go ahead. Can I turn it off in the middle of it doing it, or is it all or none? Herbie? This is Brad. Brad, what, go ahead. That... No, you can't do it while it's happening. Oh. And 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 to add to that, I have T-Mobile. I don't know about others, but until this feature came out, my voicemail would send me a text message with the transcript of the voice message. When this new feature came out, I stopped getting those. And I would be doing something like on a phone call and a phone call would come in and I'm like, oh, I don't want to take that call right now. And I'm while I'm on the phone, I start hearing that transcript and it was really an you know distracting i should say and so and i wasn't getting those transcripts for me to hear later so i went and learned that if i turned that setting off like herbie said it in your settings go to phone and you'll find it in there um and turn that off i got my transcripts back and i was no longer bothered when i chose not to take a call i didn't find it very helpful because as they're transcripting, as the transcript is appearing on the screen, voiceover kept starting over every time a new line. So it was kind of useless if you're a voiceover user. Right. I this wonder, Herbie. Herbie, go ahead. I actually have found the transcripts, well, to be fair, there have been times when I found them annoying and actually times when I have found them useful. They've kind of um, gotten a little bit better and there's going to be some factors like who's leaving the message, but... Um, Actually, I have sometimes like, you know, if I'm at least listening to the transcript, it tells me if I if it's a number, especially that I don't recognize, like the other week, I saw that it was a call from my dentist. And even though I didn't pay full attention to the transcript, I was like, oh, I know this is a legit person or somebody calling me the other day. And it's like so sometimes for me, at least just hearing enough of the transcript to give me the idea of um who is calling right off the bat and uh, tells me, okay, do I need to go back and attend to this now or later? You know, so if I hear something like, this is Sonia, for instance, you know, that's going to be a good indicator that I better pay attention, you know, because it's going to be important. But if I hear that it's Brad, I can be like, oh, well, I can wait till later, you know, type thing. So, so. you could you could answer the call. And I can answer it, the during, call too if I want to. Yep. Can, you, can you stop the transcript from talking? The only way I found to stop this transcript from talking is to either lock the screen or turn off your mute speech or turn off voiceover. Okay. Um, it would be Just nice to have. Double tap. What was yeah. that? Three finger double tap should stop it, but that's pretty right. too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pete. Let's, Pete, go ahead. I'm wondering what the hullabaloo is here about having a transcript that talks to you why don't you just tap on voicemail and listen to the voicemail this is brad brad go ahead i think this whole feature was kind of created with you know the idea that you know for sighted people you're on a call mm. it comes up and you can just take a look at it and it's not going to distract you the way it does the voiceover user like i'm on the call i'm trying to talk and I got yeah. voiceover starting to talk while I'm talking on a call. Yeah. Whereas if you're not using voiceover, you may in fact be able to kind of pull the phone away from your head. It's, you know, it may go to speakerphone. You can still continue your conversation while you're visually looking at the phone and the other person on the other end doesn't even know what you're doing. Right. Right. Yeah. So you see it. Mm -hmm. Right. For some, for somebody with vision, that would, that would so I think that's be a, a convenient feature, yeah. but yeah, not so much for us. But a couple this of is Herbie. Is, okay, is, guys, everybody one at a time, guys. Okay, Peyton and Herbie. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, it seems like just an extra redundant step because you're you're getting a written textual transcript 
that you want to speak to you when in it, you know, the initial source is the voicemail, which speaks to you already. It just seems like redundant. Yeah. Herbie, go ahead. So a couple of things to think about. First of all, we live in a modern age where voicemail is not used as much. So it's probably part part of it might be a way to get, you know, younger people back into voicemail a little bit because it's like getting a text message. Um, but the other reason why we have this feature now is because of the, you know, it's basically an answering machine. And so the other thing you can do is, which we demonstrated, is um, on the Saturday workshop, is how you can um, interrupt the call at any time and answer and talk to the person live. So if you see, you, you know, like, um, I, I think you're old enough to remember the, those answering machines where you could hear somebody leaving a message and you'd be like, oh, actually, I am in a position to talk. So then you pick up the phone. And so they're trying to create that type of thing. Um, right. It'd be cool for well, everybody to just hear on. the voicemail. But, okay. Yeah. Okay. What are we old, Herbie? Yeah, we've talked about yeah let's go ahead and move on let's let's pick up one more question before the break who this has, is who simone. Has, i'm oh. sorry who is it simone simone go ahead hey hi hi um i have a question so i've been using gmail as my default uh, mail app but um now i've been using the mail app and i'm more comfortable with the mail app however i don't get my notifications from the mail app if i go into the mail app my emails are there but i'm not getting the notifications because gmail is my default where can i go to make the mail app my default so i can get the notifications for the mail app and no longer from the gmail app okay and notifications you want sound alerts or yes okay okay so who can help with it Anybody? This is Herbie. Herbie, go. I would check under mail, and I think you can select your default email there. The other thing, though, too, if, if you're not using it, you could just delete the Gmail app, and that would also solve the problem. Okay, so just delete it all together? Yeah. Okay. This is Brad. Brad, go ahead. Well, when Herbie said go under mail, there's going to be a thing in there for notifications. But what that does is it takes you to notifications under settings. So you should be able to go to notifications. You could go to either of these two apps and manage how you want notifications from those two apps. I'm not aware that the Gmail app, email app would turn off notifications for the mail app. I don't know why it would, but maybe it does. And I've never noticed. I used it briefly and stopped using it. Um, but I would go into... You know, if you don't want notifications from Gmail, you should be able to go in there and manage those notifications. And then under notifications, go to the mail app and set those for how you want them. I would right. think that would be able to do it. So, I mean, are you no longer using the Gmail app? I mean, I'm still signed in and everything, but typically I just go right to the mail app. Even if I don't get the notifications, I know right. that's just the app that I want to use. So I just go in there, but I'm still getting the notifications from from Gmail. And I did go to notifications and I see that mail. I'm not familiar. Maybe you guys are, but it has the notification as note. I don't know what the sound that is or whatever, whatever. It's just a is. ding. It's okay. Just, yeah. So, yeah. It has it as no, but I don't get the thing. So, so it's there, but maybe it's because, um, you know, Gmail is the default. So maybe it's a matter of just getting rid of it. I don't, I don't know. Cause I'm not getting the ding. I'm getting the notification ringtone that I have for Gmail. So well, this is Brad. I'll go, I'd go look at Gmail, yeah. go ahead, Brad. maybe turn the sound off for Gmail, go to the mail app and try mm -hmm. turning that ding off or selecting another one and then selecting the note again okay. and that might fix it sometimes even though it's set they don't make the sound so pick another one then go uh, back to the one you want and see if just making that change uh, there also should be a sound where you can toggle the sound on or off and even though you have a sound selected it might be toggled off okay. and just go explore around in okay. there and you might, oh. yeah, like Brad was saying, you might turn the sound off for for Gmail and and see what uh, 
what happens for the Gmail app and see what yeah see if that changes the behavior. Okay, thank you, everybody. Yes, Sandia, are we ready to go to halftime? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, right. Greg. Yes, ma'am. All right, so let's go. This is the midpoint of the call. Anybody that didn't get to say hello the first time around, please tell us your name and where you're from. Simone. Angelo in Ottawa. Simone and Angelo, welcome. Who else? Vincent Pat in Ohio. <laughs> Pat and Vincent. Vincent, good evening, sir. Linda Conroe. Hey, Linda. Keep going, everybody else. Dana from Cincinnati. Hey, Dana, Mr. Maryland. Brooks. Welcome, Brooks. Uh, this is Kathy from Tulsa. Hey, uh, yes, Nate, welcome. And Kathy from Tulsa. Kathy, welcome. Yes. Hi, Sandia. It's Judy from Connecticut. Hey, Judy, welcome. Jen from Michigan. Who's that? Oh, Jen, Jenny welcome, from Jen. Missouri. Welcome, welcome. Keep going. Kenny from Nikki, Missouri. San Francisco. Kenny, Nikki, welcome. Hi. Anybody else? David from Houston. Hey, David. All right. Shree from Virginia. Hey, Shree. Marvin, Chicago. Hey, Marvin, welcome. Okay, peeps, we are ready to roll. Uh, as we know, we're going to do the big reveal, find out what movie we're watching Friday at 8 p.m. Central Time, Social Time at 7.15, discussion and trivia to follow. Okay, who is giving us our clues today is the big question. Let us find out. What does this mean? I have no who's out there. Sandy, if you're talking, we can't hear you. Oh, it was? All right, well, whatever. We'll pretend that we heard the song. Okay, all right. I'm a guy, or I'm a guy, are you out there? Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> there has it that Mr. McCullough is, because we're almost to Halloween, Rumor has it that Mr. McCullough is tonight hobnobbing with a goblin. Ooh. Oh. Oh. So it is time. It is your lucky day again, everybody, because it's now time for Terry's tantalizing theatrical trivia. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes. And of course, before we get to these fantastic trivia clues that I did not write, I just want to make that clear from the start. <laughs> we have to talk about these rules because if we don't, uh, I don't know, Sandia might mute me forever and I don't want that. <laughs> so the rules to remember are number one, say your name and wait to be recognized don't just say your name and start talking say your name and wait to be recognized and rule number two it's one guess per person per clue so are we ready for rule number i mean clue number <laughs> one our movie this week takes place in one of our favorite cities on the right coast. That would be the East Coast. <clears throat> New York City. Our <clears throat> movie this week takes place in one of our favorite cities on the right coast. New York City. Who would like to Kenny? make the first guess? Kenny, go. Uh, my guess is happy birthday, Michael. 
Oh, well, but uh, since he's not that. here, I'm thinking that probably isn't the right movie. And uh, you're okay. right, it's not the right movie. Uh, darn it. I but it is so his birthday today. Yes, well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. keep going, keep going. Okay, yes, it who is. Else? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Who else has a clue? A guess. Well, all right. Hearing none, we'll go on to clue number two. We see a couple who inhabit a loft, a, a loft apartment so luxurious that he must be making a fortune at his job or maybe she is the one making that fortune. We see a couple who inhabit a loft apartment so luxurious that he or she must be making a fortune. Pete, go. Barefoot in the park. Barefoot in the park. Mm -hmm. Good guess, but not the right one. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Try again. Mm -hmm. Who else has this a This is Shree. Shree, go. Private parts? Wait, wait a minute. This is a family <laughs> show. We, we can't talk about uh -huh. that. Uh, no, uh -huh. that's not the movie either. Uh -huh. Sorry. Can't Who show else? Darn either. <laughs> <laughs> Who else has a guess? And definitely oh. want to encourage other people to participate. Yes. You can be unmuted during this part. So who has a guess? This is Nate. Yes, Nate. Go ahead. Kramer versus Kramer. Kramer versus Kramer. Oh, that's a good guess, but not the right one. All right. Any other guesses? Or should we go on to clue number three? All they need right, help. Let's, <laughs> let the, I think so. <laughs> let's try clue number three. Maybe this will be the one that does the trick. <laughs> the couple, one a banker, the other an artist, are madly in love. Ooh, that sounds exciting. The couple, one a banker, the other an artist, are madly in love. I bet that will give it away. Hmm. I don't hear anything. I guess these people don't like uh, romantic movies. Kenny? Yes. Oh. Kenny, go. Mm -hmm. What do you think? The Wolf of Wall Street? The mm. Wolf of Wall Street. Hmm, never heard of that one. But uh, no, that's a good guess. But this is not David. the right one either. Yes, David, go ahead. Is it Ghost? Ghost. Uh, let me check with the judges here. Ghost. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Good job, David. Yes, indeed. Good um, job, David. Like it, it is Ghost. So it's Ghost from 1990, to be very precise. Wow. So, Johnny, what do we have for our <laughs> winner this week? Uh, I bet David already guessed. You're going to get your very pottery own wheel? pottery wheel. So yeah. you can make whatever you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll leave that pottery to your imagination. Wheel. Does it include the clay? Uh, no, you don't need clay. <laughs> <Not included>? <laughs> <laughs> Who needs clay? <laughs> yeah, clay is overrated. Yeah, clay is overrated. You know? That's not what they <laughs> used it for. All right. <laughs> so thank you, Carrie <laughs> All this right. Is good. I thought it was going to get it from Ghost. Want to say good night, Terry uh, Ann? Sure. Good night, Terry Ann. <laughs> good night, Terry Ann. Well done. All right. Very good. Man. There she goes. Thanks, everybody. Here I go. Bye. All right. She's gone.
Thandi, are you there? We don't hear you. I'm here. I was here the whole time. All right. Greg, thank you, Terry Ann. And Greg, are you ready to go with the Odd Bug Bite segment? Yes. Okay. Yes, let's, yes, yes. Let's see if this let me would... let me make a, a real quick comment on the front end. Okay. Okay, this can be so the iBug bite tonight is going to be on how we increase our uh, speaking rate for Siri. And I just want to clarify so you've got your voiceover speaking rate, and you most of us have that in the rotor where we can adjust, go to speaking rate and adjust our voiceover speaking rate. Uh, this will be an independent setting for adjusting your Siri speaking rate. And it's a new feature in iOS 17. The other thing is in settings, we have one of the line items is for Siri and um, Siri and I forget what, but anyway, there's a Siri line item. The, the adjustments that I'm going to be talking about tonight for the Siri speaking rate are going to be under in settings access and we go to accessibility and then there will be a line item within accessibility that we'll be dealing with. So with that, Sandia, go ahead and roll them. All right. Hopefully we hear this. Not hearing anything. They're coming through, Greg? No, no, it's not yeah, coming through. That's what I was afraid of. I'm yeah, maybe just do it live? Just, yes. yeah, give them a highlight. Yeah, sorry. Oh, I was going to suggest something, Sandia, for your setup real quick, but okay. Okay. Okay, so on, on this, the Siri uh, speaking rate, uh, to, to adjust that, we're going to go into settings and we'll open accessibility and we'll flick down to Siri and we open that and down toward the bottom, there's going to be a speaking rate adjustment for Siri and we can flick over to that, uh, up and down the adjustment uh, toggle and flick up and down to whatever speaking rate we want. Um, and you've got your range on that is anywhere from 80% to 200%. And I've, I have mine, I set mine to 140%. And I've found it just gives, makes Siri a lot snappier, uh, a lot quicker responses. Uh, and, I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't always get this to work, but it it should work so that if you're in Safari and you ask Siri to read a page, then she should speak at that faster speaking rate, which would be a you know real time saver. Uh, but that's that's the uh, that's the feature, and if you haven't tried it and you have iOS 17, I'd really encourage you to try it. It's uh, I really like it. Uh, anybody have any questions on that? What a trooper, Greg. Thank you. Let's get the people in. I was afraid it'd take too long to get my phone set up to do that, uh, do an actual demo. Yeah, you did great. Yeah, okay. All right, go ahead. Anybody with questions for Greg? Linda? Yes, go Linda. ahead. Um, did you say you could uh, change it with uh, the Siri voice? Uh, well, you can you can pick a Siri voice, but you also you just change the speed, the speed that she's spe she or he is speaking. With Siri, the the Siri voice, yeah, yeah, whatever voice you have selected for Siri, you can increase the speaking rate up to two hundred percent, or you can go down as low as eighty percent. Dana. Dana, go ahead. How long did it take you to learn how uh how long did it take you to learn to understand a hundred and forty percent? 
140 is real easy. And yeah. I'm, yeah, uh, I, I got up to, I tried it at 200 and that was, that was a little fast for me, but I'm sure there are people on this call that would be perfectly comfortable with that. Is this okay. David? Who, who was it, Dave? David? Pete? Pete? Uh -oh. oh, Pete, I'm sorry. I just wanted to point that out. That, those rates are considerably higher than the regular voiceover rate. So you're thinking, what do you know? What do you have right. the voiceover rate at just to compare? Right. I have my voiceover rate at uh, 65. So that's so 140 and, is comparable to that or? Uh, yeah, but probably in the ballpark, maybe a little slower. Yeah. OK. Yeah, you just you just have to play with it and yeah, and see what you're comfortable with. Yeah, thank you. But I I really enjoy having Siri a little snappier. So this is not. Uh, hold on, I think we had David first. Okay, oh. David. Yeah, oh. David, go. Oh, I didn't ask. So she's snappier, but is she smarter? I know. Oh. <laughs> no, they don't have a setting for that yet. Yeah. The Doc, wrong answer faster. <laughs> right. Yeah, I found this on the web. <laughs> uh. Uh, Doc, go ahead. Yes, um, I missed the beginning. So you, how do you, uh, what setting you got to change the rate of the Siri itself? Not not the voice over. Uh, You're right. For setting. Siri, yeah. You go you so go into settings. You go setting. You go to accessibility. Yes. And you and you go you go down to the bottom of the page. It's like the third from the bottom, I think, and it's just label Siri. Okay. And open and that you up. Go from there. Yeah. Now you have to have iOS seventeen. Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, okay. okay. Well, then you go from there, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. flick a few times and you'll find the voice rate adjustment. This is Marty. Marty, yeah. go ahead. I know this isn't part of your demo, but can you do it with Siri or do you have to go into settings? I think you have to go to settings. I, I didn't try with, it with Siri, but I don't think you'd be able to do that. Okay, and, and so that is the only way. There's no shortcut way. You have to go into settings the way you showed it. I think, yeah. Oh. I think, I think you'd have to, yeah. Thanks. Uh-huh. Anybody else? All right. It's all yours, Sandia. Oh, thank you. Okay. So who would like to ask a question? Somebody that hasn't had a turn? Please say your this name. This is Kenny. Please. Go ahead. Has uh, Iowa 17.1 come out yet? Anybody? Don't think so. From our previous discussion. Go, Shree. Yeah. If you're running beta, it is. Okay, yeah. Wow. yeah, I know it's in beta, but they said it was going to be released at the end of the month, or not the end of the month, but sometime during the month. So. Okay, well, it's not yet. <laughs> Thank you. All right, next. Let's go, let's go. New question. Linda. Go ahead. Um, how do I enable my Siri button to make a noise when I I still have a home button and when I push the button, you know, I can get to Siri, but I'd like to have that ding or whatever the the sound is to go with it, and I don't have it. Mm, I think you're not the only one. Who would like to help Linda? We talked about that. Pete. So, uh, we had a discussion about it uh, last week, I think, and there is no way. They don't have that. It's been eliminated. You can get the haptic oh. feedback if you go in there. You can get the, you know, the little uh, vibration on the phone, but not the audible tone. Very good. Oh. He was paying attention. Oh. Thank you, Pete. Sorry, Linda. Okay. Next. Thank you. Go, go, go. Who's next? This is Kenny. Okay. Those of you who have, you know, the the iPhone 15 Pro or Max, what uh, cool things have you done with your action button? I know some people have made um, Google pop up as their own. That's a preferred action, the assistant. And other people have done other things. All right, anybody? Changing the action. This is Shri. Go, Shri. I haven't really created anything, but I have read that people are doing a lot of shortcuts. And with that, you know, you can pretty much 
do whatever your mind is thinking of because you have a lot of different options. I've seen people do multiple functions with the just with one button, doing two tasks, running shortcuts. So, uh, you know, there's lots of opportunities with that. So this is Sanya. Where is this action button? Is it a virtual button or a physical button? Or it's, what? A, it's a physical button. So it, it basically replaced the the mute notch oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. slider. Okay. So it replaced uh-huh. it with that button. So basically, by default, if you push it, it goes to unmute. You push and hold. It's actually push and hold, unmute, push and hold, will mute. And then in accessibility, there's about nine different default options plus oh. the shortcut. And th- are those different from our regular shortcuts that we had before? Or are they all are together? They're basically, you know, they're like you. It's, they're the shortcuts that we've had before. But now you have you can use it with the action button. Like one of them is you could use it to turn voiceover on and off. One is to turn on some functionalities and accessibility. Uh, there is uh, one to do voice memo if you want to push it to turn on voice memo oh. automatically. So there, you have like nine default settings that you can turn on and off. And then, like I said, with shortcuts, you can be creative, create your own. All track. right. Thank you. Okay, next. Dana. Go, David. Go Dana and then David. Yeah. Um, does anyone have a problem when... For example, uh, when you send a, a message and it repeats your message back to you, it stops um, repeating it. And uh, um, it says, like, um, your message says, and then it stops. Okay, so voiceover's not repeating your text message that yeah, you dictated. Some- yeah, sometimes it says it, but then sometimes it doesn't. Okay, who has that issue? Okay, and you can also, do. what happens when you just swipe to the left, and then will it do it? Uh, you know, I haven't tried that. <laughs> this is the, Go. It's exactly what I was going to suggest. Sometimes you just flick to the left and then back to the right, you know, and kind of give it a fresh start. Um, sometimes it'll interrupt it before the, if it's not uh, at the beginning. So if you flick left, like Sanjay said, and then flick back right to your message line, it might read the entire thing. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right, oh, David. So this is free. Oh, hang on. Uh, same topic? Go. Yeah. Um, I think, David, this is something you should definitely report to Apple Accessibility because I don't, I think this is a issue that, that should be resolved because this used to work previously, you know, when you when you dictate something, it it responds it back to you. So, I would I would encourage you to report it. All right. Okay. Now, David. Oh yeah, I noticed the other day I was using my flashlight, which I use occasionally, and there's now like four settings on it. There's a dim, normal, bright, and very bright. So you oh. can bump it up if that would help anybody with. <clears throat> low vision or whatever, you know, you can, uh, or you just don't want to blind people. Like sometimes I use it to like uh, signal Metro left or whatever, you know, the, here, here I am. <laughs> when it's oh. dark outside, you know, because wow. my street's very dark. So I don't know if it helps, but it makes me feel better. Can you make it blink too? This is yeah, Shri. There's probably an app for that, I'm sure. <clears throat> I'm sure. Okay, go, Shri. So I was going to say, one of the cool features that I found with iOS 17 is, if you have videos on your iPhone, you can do a search on the photo library and type in either cheer, laugh, or clap, or clapping. And it'll find all videos that entails those three gestures. Okay. <laughs> I'll have to check about Go. Uh, where do you get them? Where does it get them? From YouTube or what? No, no. It's your... Like, for example, I have videos of my, you know, like at a party. Oh, your own and, videos, your own yeah, videos. If you just type oh. in the word laugh, it'll find all the videos that have laughing inside the videos. Okay. As well as photos, too. Do they have to be titled with that word or they, no. they go in and find the content? No. There's no cool. title to it. It's just, and, you know, for someone who has sight, they could actually see where in that video track the laughing actually occurs. Very uh. good. Okay. Thanks, Shri. All right, Thanks, next. Greg. So, sorry. Yeah, it's Greg. Go. Yeah. So, how do you get to these flashlight settings if if you want to change those? 
David. Yeah, it's David. Well, the way I got to it, I under the uh, control center, I have flashlight in there. And of course, there's the on toggle, but then the, to, right to the right of it, there's a uh, toggle where you can swipe up and change the intensity of the light, you know, All from right. normal to bright, okay. very bright. And it's also a dim. And uh, then once it's there, it kind of stays as your default uh, next time you use the flashlight. <clears throat> All right, thank you, David. And I just wanted to follow up. We had a question a while ago about, you know, turning off the flashlight. And I think we, I, I forgot, I think it was Simone. But anyway, you can use Siri also to turn off your flashlight in case right. you have it. That wasn't I always an option. I okay. haven't tried to ask her to like turn it brighter. I'll, I'll see if that works. Maybe. Yeah, oh, okay. Let us know. All right. Yes. <laughs> I've got another comment. Go ahead. Uh, there is an app called Eclipse Soundscape, which is not doesn't have anything to do with the GPS soundscape. And with Eclipse Soundscape, you can uh, turn on notifications. And the, it, the, this app was specifically developed so that uh, blind people could appreciate eclipses. And if you'd had it on Saturday, you would have heard the uh, uh, Circle of Fire uh, as it approached the area down in uh, Houston. And um, there's going to be another major eclipse in northern New England uh, on April the 8th. And so this app will give you a notification for the eclipse during you know real time live. And then when you open the app, it will describe what's actually happening. So it's really cool. And it's called Eric. Eclipse Soundscape. All right. Thank you. Eclipses. Eclipse eye? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Next. Chris. 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 Uh, for the flashlight, I'm, I'm still on iOS 16, but if you do a one finger triple tap on the control center and flashlight, you'll get those different options for the brightness settings. All right. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Let's go. Who's next? All right. I have a question. Uh, I'm using Netflix and I've started uh, watching this series uh, recommended by our iBug guy. It's called Suits. Probably been out for a while. Usually don't like legal dramas, but anyway. Uh, and I'm in Netflix and I cannot. I, I okay, so it's it, once you start watching, it flips to the landscape mode. And then you're stuck in there. And I guess that's just always the way it is to watch Netflix. And so then I want to, go, you can go swiping right and then you can see the episode list. And I don't know, I just have a lot of issues selecting the episode that I want to watch. Does anybody, I know it's really broad, but this is, anybody have this that? Kenny? Go Kenny. When you switch to the episode list, it'll display it in portrait. Oh. And so you just flick through it like you would as in portrait and then double tap on the episode that you want to uh, play. Maybe that's why. Will that help you out? Well, and then the other thing is, remember, I uh, have I'm supporting several illegal people on my, my Netflix account, but some of them got kicked off recently. <laughs> so uh, some of it says you can't, uh, you can't download because somebody else is downloading. You ever seen that? Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah. Kenny. Uh -huh. Kenny. Uh, I don't mean to pry. Do you pay about twenty bucks a month for your Netflix? Yeah, probably. I don't know. I'm paying okay. for two screens. Okay, you need to upgrade to the four screen one. I want to upgrade to four screens. Make it's it about up. twenty bucks a month. Uh huh. Um, and that might solve your download issue. <clears throat> okay. Uh, All right. I don't mean to but, have you spend more money, but if you want your Netflix, that's what you got to do. Well, I've been getting very panicked calls saying, can you authorize me? And I'm like, no. <laughs> All right. Okay, David. Did I hear David? I think Pete. it was Pete. Oh, Pete, go. Uh, just coordinate among the people who are sharing it with you that, you know, when tell you when they are downloading so you don't yeah. uh, Easier conflict. said than done. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> this is Shri. There's no app for money. that. Okay, go pay ahead, Shri. Uh, also, you know, when you're watching Netflix, when you're in the portrait mode, I think if you keep swiping right, it'll 
tell you the season, like season one, season two, yeah, season yeah. three. All the way to the left. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you okay. deflect it. And then. That, yeah, it's pretty cool. Enjoying it. This is okay. Greg. Go. Can you authorize me? No. Uh-huh. You're this not is Pete. part of my family. I don't want you part of my family. Okay, go, Pete. The Suits is an outstanding series. Thank you. Yes, that's pretty good. Even for a Mr. McCulloch choice, you know. All right. I like, okay, who else? This is Nate. Go, Nate. I think for Netflix, some people might use a VPN. So you just mimic your same site. And it works, I believe, on a tablet. It may, I don't know if it works on a TV. Oh, okay. But I think VPNs work. All right. I don't have one, but maybe that would help. Okay. All right. Next. Who's Bridget? Go, oh, Miss Bridget. Okay, get get closer to your phone, please. I said when I was trying to unmute, I had heard someone say about a tablet, but I was going to ask you, Sonia, do you look at Netflix on your phone? I know it has a pay, but are you talking about looking at it on your phone? Yes, I do pay, and I can. I think you can authorize a few people in your, so I'm not totally breaking the law, not totally, but anyway, I am listening on my iPhone. But you can listen on your computer. You can listen on any device. You can watch on the TV. Like we have a smart TV, so we can watch there. But I mostly listen on my iPhone. This is David. Go. Um, Go on, that, on the Netflix, don't the people have to be like on the same network as you? Um, like if they're on a different um, IP address that sees them as even though they might have authorized them as a family or given them the account. Yes. You know, they're, they're cracking well, down on that. So, I think, um, well, like Kenny said, if you have the four screens, I guess you can share it no matter where people live. But yep. um, Well, pr- you know, prior to this latest, uh, whatever, shut down, no, that's the wrong word. Um, anyway, uh, shakedown, uh, I had my, some people, my nieces in New York was using it, ah. so... But they're yeah. not in my same network. But yeah, this is true. <laughs> right. This is, well, this is Kenny too. Yep. Go, Kenny. What? Um, on the yeah, on the Netflix, like you said, they um, he, he, if they're in the same household, you can watch it on four screens. That's the twenty dollar one. And then, you know, like you say, you know, if they're in New York and you're in Texas, Netflix knows of this, and they're you know they're flipping out and saying, ah, oh, you gotta. You yeah. know, pay your own way, and the cheapest, if you want to do this, is you can pay eight dollars more a month to authorize that user, and and it basically makes them make a new password and a, another email address, or you know whatever email address they want to use, and it ports their profile to that new account that you're paying dollars uh, a month. I I actually had to uh, do this, and that's why I know about it. And oh. uh, and so they get their same profile under your account that you authorize, and you, you pay an extra eight dollars a month. So you were sharing your ID as uh, well. I'm not the only guilty one. This okay. Is free. No, 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 no. Uh, my brother was sharing, and he, <laughs> okay. he went okay. through, you know went through that. <laughs> okay, I'll have to follow up on that. Go, oh, Shree. Like, like, um, sure. Are you going to edit this stuff out? No, I don't think Netflix is listening to our podcast. They have better things to do, like right. track people down like me. Okay, go. Next. Next question. Pete. Go ahead. Hang on, Pete. Let's just make sure there's nobody else new that hasn't had a turn. We've all had lots of turns here. Nobody? New people? Okay, go, Pete. I just wanted to follow up with Kenny so she could do that and authorize her niece in New York for $8 a month for a new, essentially a new account, right? So what's that compare price-wise with just her niece setting up her own fresh account from scratch? Is this, this is Kenny? Go. Um, the cheapest I've seen is 15 a month. Okay. Substantial. Um, 
And they used to have a commercial free, no thrills, no high definition, blah, 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 for $10 a month. Um, but they quickly did away with that. And they want you to go to the 15, well, it's like maybe may 1495. Like, yeah, yeah. 15. I just rounded it up. And uh, yeah. it's cheaper to do the eight if your family is willing to do that. Okay, I could be is the it, good aunt and do that. Well, okay, you could yeah, do that, Vincent. But, you know, go, but, Vincent. Get legal. That's the best thing. Hang on, hang on. Go, Vincent. Uh, there's one other option. If uh, if you accept to have commercials, which they usually interrupt <laughs> once during the uh, uh, program, you oh. pay seven dollars and sixty four cents a month. Oh, okay. And the this commercials only last about thirty seconds. That's okay. a shriek. That's a good option. Go shriek. So I'm kind of thinking outside the box here. What happens if you're watching Netflix on your cell service and not on Wi-Fi? Would they know because there's no IP address to your router? How would they know where you're at then? That is a rhetorical question. No idea. Anybody? Okay. We don't want any. Maybe tell you. Questions. Maybe tell your uh, niece to do that. Just watch it on mobile phone. I don't know. They are sighted. I'm sure they don't want to watch on a dinky little screen. Well, then have a merit from the phone. Okay. All right. I will take it under advisement. Okay, this go. Is Kenny? Go. Oh, who? Oh, you. Kenny. Oh, um, yeah, you could try that LTE version. You could try that, but it, it'll probably still, you know, it's, it's already flagged, that profile. Um, so I, I, I don't think that would work. I mean, it could work, but I think it's already flagged it because that's what happened to me. And uh, that's okay. why we did the $8 thing. And, All uh, right. Let's move on to a new topic. Thank you, guys. Who's next? New topic. This is Ed. Go, Ed. Yeah, I have a question about keyboards. Uh, Go last ahead. week, Last week, we got a, a thing about a keyboard, about holding down the delete key and uh, double tapping and holding it down, and it would, it would delete um, a line. I tried that and I couldn't get my keyboard to do it. But what I did find was if I held down the command key and hit the delete button, uh, it would it would delete a word at a time, which All right. which is which now, is a nicer so, thing. But oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean but, to interrupt. But I, I'm just wondering: is there a different in key difference in keyboards? I thought they were the same. All the same logic I see. All right, I'll take this question. So Brad's demo was on an iPhone using the virtual keyboard, not a Bluetooth keyboard. So oh. I don't know if you can replicate that. I mean, if you're doing the command delete, that is how the Mac would work, and it would delete word by word. Okay. Brad, anybody else? Want I'm to sure. I thought he was on a on a keyboard. No, that's okay. Good question. This is free. And I, hang on, I think I also need to follow up with you, Ed. You asked about uh, cycling through, uh, you know, open windows. And I gave you the wrong answer and said command accent. And command accent is to open windows within an app. And you were correct. The command tab is to cycle through different apps. So I apologize for that. Okay. And right. and but I but I can't get my keyboard to do that. Okay, well that's reason, a different problem. Work. Yeah, we talked about that and I don't know yeah. what we can Okay, yeah, I did it. try the accent thing and it it didn't work. Okay. Well, <laughs> all right. Okay. Go Shree. So uh, just Thank a clarification, you. what is it that he was trying to delete? Are you trying to delete like a character, or a line, or a word? No, he he was trying to do the double tap and hold on the delete and just delete several things. That was the demo from last week. And he's trying to do it on a keyboard. Brad did it on a virtual keyboard. Well, it would do that if you hit the backspace. Oh, Because yeah. if you, if you uh, tap it, it's just going to delete one. And you hold on to it, it's just going to continuously delete. Uh, this is Ed. Uh-huh. Um, hold down the command and, and no, touch no. the delete key. A word at a time is, is much better than uh, no, zipping saying, off a whole line. Hey, hold I'm on, press the command Shree's key. telling you. Go, Shree. I'm not pressing the command key. Just press the delete or the backspace key. You know the right. Uh, just press it once; it's going to delete one letter. If you press and hold, it's just going to do a continuous delete. On a Bluetooth mm -hmm. keyboard. Yes. Yes. Okay. The, the backspace right. okay. is is where? Where's the backspace? Key? Upper right. 
up right. Do you, have, do you have a keyboard with the numeric keypad or just a regular keypad? Uh, just a regular keypad. Okay. You know where your return the, key the, is? The, the, the right the, side? The, the, yeah. Yeah. Go up two, One, and that should two. be your backspace. Okay. So it's right below the, the delete key. That's a backspace. The backspace okay. is right above like your your F keys, and right below that would be your backspace key. Also, yeah. I would suggest doing the VOK, and that'll get you a help mode, and you can touch the different keys and figure out which one is your backspace. But it's usually the second row on the very right. Right. This is Shri. Okay, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. I, I do want to say that um, in our presentation, um, Roy was, you know, one of the questions that came was how to um, answer and disconnect the phone call. You can do a VO and the minus key on the num keypad, but also answer and disconnect the call. Okay. All right. Now, something new, somebody new question, please. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Pat. Oh, thank goodness. Yes, Pat, go. Okay. I think last week I asked about the typing, you know, it just doesn't seem to be doing the touch and double tap all the time. And I did talk to Apple. They said there was a problem, but does anybody have any hints? Because I did go into settings and tweak that, but I guess I need to retweak or something unless anybody has any other suggestions. So just to clarify, you're, were you, you were having trouble with uh, standard typing? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, and it wasn't working. It wasn't registering the double taps. Okay. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You know, when I type and it's like doing the space key, it doesn't, <laughs> I have to do it several times before it adds the space there. It's very annoying. I'm hoping they do a bug fix on it soon because it's driving me crazy. Oh, okay. I would suggest until then use touch typing. It's a lot. It might be a little, just see if you like it. I mean, you might like it. Well, I did try true. that before and I didn't. But oh, I, okay. But that was when I <laughs> had first standard got typing. My, yeah. Okay. Who has anybody tried the same issue? Go, Shri. I was wondering, have you tried Pat just doing like that, you know, touch with one finger and tap with another finger to see if you have better success? I will try that. I forgot to try that. Thank you. All right. There we go. Thank you, Pat. Next, who else? This is Pete. Yes, Pete. I'm sorry, I was uh, trying to get on mute. Did Sri just suggest that she adjust her uh, double tap speed? No. Because uh, didn't we discuss that, Pat, as an option to go into your settings and it, that it might be the double tap issue that we're having? And it's just not, it's, it's registering on a different element on your keyboard instead of the space bar or whatever you're trying to hit. I know yes, I'm yes, there. and I did do that. I said maybe I just need to go in there and do the setting different again. Yeah. I did change it, but okay. the way I have it, it just doesn't seem to be working. Okay, okay. thank you. All right, next question. This okay. is Vincent. Go, Vincent. Uh, this is uh, an item concerning uh, contacts. Uh, I have contacts in my, uh, uh, I, I access them through my phone app when I'm in, using my iPhone, but in my iPad, it, it's a separate uh, application. And uh, the other day, I sent a text uh, message to a neighbor using my iPhone. And uh, when the question was answered, when the text message was answered, it came back not with her name, but with somebody else's 
name and it was and it was from her now i i went uh, and and the reason that i saw that is because the answer when it came in i was working in my on my uh, ipad and i answered i i checked i got a mess i got a, a, a haptic or a sound and i checked my text messages and i saw that this message was for, from this person whom i know but i don't i i, I don't i don't have or didn't have in my contacts. And uh, the phone number, and when I went to my phone, the phone had the correct name and, you know, and both of the, but both of them sharing the same number. And this had never happened to me. I, and I was wondering if anybody has had that type of issue. Okay, so hold on. You, are they, are they all on iCloud or Sync or? Uh, are, are they all on the same network and same Wi-Fi and same iCloud account? Uh, I, I have no idea. I'm, if they use Comcast or if they use Verizon. No, no, no. You, your, your equipment, your devices. Oh your yes, device. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all. Uh, okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, I'm sharing the same. So, so all the information in the past is uh, uh, shared. If I make a change in my uh, right. iPhone, right. It, uh, it it is reflected in my computer and in my. Uh, iPad. And, okay, uh, and so just to clarify, so you get, it gave you a different name. I mean, it didn't have the same contact information, but you got the information from a different person. The only thing that was the same was the telephone number. Okay, right. Okay, anybody have any thoughts? That's really strange. I have no idea. That's uh, pretty weird. This is Shrek. Go. I was just going to say, Vincent, I'm not exactly sure. Did you check to see if you did a search on the name? Are you only getting that one name? Or are you getting multiple names? No, one name, just one name. What about and when you search that, on the phone number? On the phone number in my phone under contacts, it was just one name and it was the correct name. What about when in I iPad? Checked, in my iPad, uh, the name of my, the contact that I had in my phone was not there at all. And it was only this other person's name with her uh, iPhone number. Uh, okay. One thing I would suggest is maybe turn off your iCloud sync for your contacts and resync it and see if it that updates. Because it it may be that you might have one number that's in your iPad that's not in your iPhone. Well, that, I actually well I don't know I, I, yeah I will check that. Uh, and, and, and one other thing, you know, you can also have the contacts app on your phone too. Besides the contacts that's in the phone app, you can have a separate app, the contacts app on your phone too. Right. This is okay. Paul. Go, Paul. Hey. Hi. Hey, um, the gentleman that's talking about the contacts, I've had the problem he's had actually with the neighbor also. But anyway, if he deletes that contacts and re adds that number, tell him to try that. That worked for me. Yeah, yeah that, right. that's what I did. Yeah, that's what okay. I did. Good job. Thank you, Paul. Glad to have yes. you back. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea. All right. So waiting on my cruise, but don't worry. I'm still patient. Okay. Okay, next. Who wants to go next? Richard. Paul. Go, Richard. Um, with the phone number contact names, uh, this I don't know if this would be any help, but... I have issues on that level when I call someone. It's because of the number might be a new number or an old number. They cycle these phone numbers through phone companies, and it could have been somebody else's at one time. So sometimes when I made a call to somebody, they said, whose name is this? Because my phone number belonged to somebody else at one uh, time. Okay. And so it's a possibility your ID recognized it as this phone number, but the iPad, the caller ID could say, wait a minute, it, this person is this, it used to be this person. And I've gotten phone calls myself where I'm like, wait, I know that number, but that's uh -huh. not that person's name. So I've gotten them too. It's okay. that's something to think about that it, they're old numbers, but they're always cycling those yeah. numbers. Okay. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> Can we go on next? Well, new topic. Let's go. 
question. Pat, can I make a comment on the last one? Okay, quickly. Um, sometimes if I have somebody's name and phone number in my phone and the last two digits are different and both contacts are in there, it'll say Mike or Dr. So-and-so is calling. And I'm like, this is crazy. If I have the number entered for both people, I I just don't get it why they tell me it's this person or that person. Mm. Calling. Yes. I've had where it says, you know, three possible people because I have multiple entries for my sister, but that's a different, different issue. So. Yeah. All right. Next. Who else? Oh, it's Chris. Oh, Chris. On my Logitech keyboard, um, the delete key, if I hold it on the Logitech keyboard, mine does not continue to delete. It just deletes one character, and that's it. For my All Logitech. right. Okay, Ed, you have an answer. It doesn't work. This is Ed. Go okay. ahead. Uh, are you holding down the button right beside your space bar? No, the delete key. The backspace, the backspace, the no, delete no, hold, key. Hold the button down that's beside the space bar, which is a command key, and touch the delete key, and it'll delete a word. Yeah, I, I, want, I wanted to delete all of it, though. I just wanted to verify that. It doesn't delete everything. Yeah, no, just thought, one word at a time. I understand. Every time you touch the delete, it, it deletes a, a word. Okay. Well, the question was, can you hold down the delete key and continuously delete? And she's saying you cannot. Correct. Okay. Yes. Chris. Go, Chris. I have another question. Um, speaking of real things with text messages, uh, on my, I had a um a conversation with somebody, and I don't know if I had my phone open to it or I just went to look at it. But in the iMessage, like the new iMessage edit box at the bottom, there was a message keyed in there, like from me, that I did not key in. So, so has this ever happened to anybody? It it said something like, uh, "Where are you? Went to Walmart." So I went. I did not key that in and I did not copy paste. I, I, is anybody ever had these phantom messages show up in the new iMessage edit box at the bottom? Well, this is something I've had Siri accidentally talk, you know, record what I was saying when I was talking to somebody else. So was there any bit of it, some conversation that you had? This is Chris. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, I thought about Siri also. And it will say, you know, by Siri, or if you if I can, if you were to send it, it would say this was, you know, by Siri, whatever. But um, no, I, d I don't use Siri. And I don't have Hey Siri on. Or, okay. Anybody? Phantom messages. This is Pete. No? Would you maybe have triggered a shortcut, a uh, key keyboard shortcut? Do you use those at all, uh, Chris? Chris? This is Chris. No, mm -hmm. I don't. Okay, you're out of luck. Sorry, Ms. Marie. Son, Go, Marie. I wanted to make a comment on the what what True was saying a while ago. If you hold down the backspace key on your keyboard, it will continuously delete, not the delete key. Backspace. Okay. So backspace and delete. I'm not going to play with them now. So we will go play with that. This is Marcia about yes. that uh, about that thing that she got in the text. Um, sometimes I get a spam, and it's you know it, it it'll be very short, um, and they're really trying to get me to answer them. Okay, thank you. All right, Chris, got some options there, but just delete it. <laughs> That's weird, this is David. Oh, no, David. Uh, another idea about deleting. Um, a large group of text with the keyboard, you can do um, uh, command A to select all and then hit the delete key. All right, very good. Many ways to accomplish the same task. Right, who else? This is Pete. Go ahead, Pete. I don't recall there being both a delete key and a backspace key on my Logitech. Chris, I don't know if you have both keys. This is Chris. Uh -huh. I just have a delete key that I'm aware of if somebody can 
Tell me if there's a separate key that's different. Yeah, the back space on my Mac keyboard is up to the 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 very top right, but one down from the right corner, top right corner, second row down. Yeah, this is Chris. That's where my delete. I, I don't know if it's yeah. delete backspace, but that's when I used to delete something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, there's not two keys, in which case you're out yeah. of luck. Yeah, this is so good. I just looked at, I did what, keyboard help on my mm -hmm. Logitech, and uh, all I have is a delete key right under the, the very far right second right. row. Right. Okay. All right. This thanks. Go. Uh, what happened? Um... What happens if you use the function key and you use the um, the back backspace key? I guess that's the only one that's I mean, you have a key that don't have an unpad, right? You just have a backspace. You don't have a delete key. Who are you talking to? I'm just asking about the so the Logitech only has a backspace key. It doesn't have a delete key, right? Is that what I'm hearing? I'm going to look again. This it says Ed. it's a delete key. Okay, go Ed. Yeah, uh, the the delete key. If you hit, if you just hit the the delete key, it deletes one character at a time. If you hold down the command key, which is the key that's directly like right beside your space key, one on each side of it. You hold that down, and you hit the delete. It'll delete a word at a time. All right. That's on the Logitech uh, EC four eighty. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's go on. Somebody else, final moments here. Uh, this is true. I just want to say a go. PSA announcement. Uh -huh. So that, I don't know if those who are running 17.03, there was an issue where when you put your phone on the charger, sometime during the night, the phone is uh, somehow powering off and people are not getting their alarms going off. Okay, not good. Not good. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Richard. Oh yes, go ahead. With the phantom style messaging, it, that's on a cell phone, iPhone. I'm yes. wondering if it's in your pocket and you don't have it on pocket mode or something and you're accidentally doing butt messaging. All and right. now it's posted on your because it's she i think she said it's on hers and it's coming from her so if she's got it in her purse she's got it's it in chris. her pocket it could be clicking on that way okay it's hang chris. on chris go it's on a table it's on a table okay <laughs> thank you chris well we All are right. watching the movie ghost so uh, yeah last <laughs> and minute the exorcist <laughs> anybody else <laughs> Anybody? No? Okay. Come on. One final question. All right. Pat, well, I guess not. We will quickly oh, review events for this week. Like we said, it's a full week. Tomorrow is MacBuzz on Clubhouse 5 to 6. Wednesday's Android Insight. Thursday's Trekkie Talk. Friday's The Movie. Ghost. It's Saturday and Sunday we're off. Thank goodness. And what else? Reading the book, The Devil in the White City. The Devil in the White City, yes. Murder, Madness, and Mad Murder, Magic, and Madness. Lots I think of madness Pat, here. Sorry? Pat had a something Go, she was Pat. trying to get in. Oh. Pat? This is Pat. I just wondered how many people have bought the 15 phone and how do you like it? Okay, that ought to be a quick answer. Who got one? I think Shree got one. Anybody else? This All is Shree. Right. Go, Shree. I have one. I have not had many of the issues that people have been presenting, but I also did a very clean install, so I don't know if that's the reason I'm having a good experience. Okay, thank you. And what? which phone did you get? I got the 15 Pro Max. Okay, that's I have an 11 Pro Max now because of the battery and everything. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for the question. 
And thank you, Greg, for your help tonight and the iBug Bites. Terry Ann, thank you for doing the clues. And we wish Mr. McCulloch a very happy birthday. And I'm sure he'll be back soon. So with that, we will say goodnight. Thank you, Julie. And we'll say goodnight. Good night, everybody. Thank you for a great meeting. Good night. Yeah. Good night, everybody.